Meet the new MSP M0C1104 from Texas Instruments. This is the world's smallest MCU, and in my previous video you saw the first baby steps and how I successfully soldered this small chip to a custom board. In this video you will see a new board that I designed in KiCad, you will see some experiments with solar paste, and finally I will show you some hints using TI Code Composer and a real nice application using the ADC, PBM and the serial port. Let's get started. You can buy the MCU and the SVD debugger through the TI store. The MCU is in the DSPJ package. Uh, unfortunately, it's currently not in stock, but I was lucky to get 10 pre-production chips. I hope that the MCU will soon be back in stock again. I really have a lot of interesting and exciting plans for this tiny MCU. The debugger is available for only $6. There is an onboard target MCU on the debugger itself, so you can already get started to learn the in and out of the MCU family. The target MCU is also in a 20-pin uh, device, so it has more GPIOs than the tiny one. I got a lot of response on the first video in this series, and one of them was about the size of the board. I have now designed an even smaller board measuring only 8 by 6 mm. Let's have a look on the schematic in KiCad. By the way, you can find all the files in my GitHub repository. Link is in the video description. In the center we have the 8-pin MCU. There are two decoupling capacitors close to the VDD pin. There is one power LED that lights when 3.3 volts is present, and we have a second LED connected to the PA24 pin through a 1 kilo ohm resistor. We have a quick connector. Here we can attach different sensors and devices on the I2C bus. This connector is also partially used for programming. In the quick connector we will use 3.3 volt ground and SCL for programming. SCL is for pulling the reset line high in your boot. For the programming we also have two test points. Here we connect the SVD signals from the programmer. The signals are SV clock and SV DU. Let's have a look on the PCB. The P PCB is a standard two layer design. The size is 8 by 6 mm and on the back side we have the quick connector and we have the rest of the remaining parts on the top side, in including the LEDs here on the right side. The SMD parts are 0402 and 0603 in size. The via drill size is 0.3 mm and via pad size is 0.6 mm. The two test points are for programming is one millimeter in size. If you order the PCB from PCB way, you need to order any gold plated boards. They can't guarantee the quality with other surface options. Let's have a look on the 3D design. Here on the top side, we have the quick connector and here on the back side, the remaining ones. I will not apply the silk screen for this order, I fear that the board will be too uneven. I still need to find the correct 3D step file for the MCU. The one I have is a bit too large. I have ordered these boards, these, these boards from PCB way, and hopefully I am able to show you the functional ones in the next episode. In the first video I have soldered the MCU not using any solar paste at all, and with great success. I did seven boards, all fully functional. But I decided to work a bit on applying solar paste. I don't have a stencil, so I tried to apply it with a sharp needle. I used this type. It's quite difficult to get the solar paste to stick to the very small 0.2 mm pads. And as you can see in my three tests here, then it was only possible to get good results with the 0402 and 0603 components. I really think I need to get a stencil for the next design.
So this video is sponsored by PCBWay, who offer a wide range of manufacturing services for your projects, including PCBs from very low cost prototype boards to more advanced PCBs, all the way up to 60 layers and also with specialist FR4 materials. You can also get your rigid flex PCBs made if you want to make something a little bit more interesting. They also offer a wide range of PCB assembly options. That means getting your PCBs assembled with components on both sides of the board, whether they be surface mount or through hole parts. PCBWay also offer some mechanical services such as CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, and also when you're making something with a little bit higher volume, you can also get some injection molding done here. So don't forget to visit pcbway.com. So here's an example of what we can do with this tiny processor. Here in this schematic, we have an analog input signal. We have an EDC measuring the input voltage. We will process it. And depending on the value that we read on the analog input, we will generate a variable PVM output. We also send the captured values to the serial port. Uh, I'll show the, that a bit later. But let's have a look on how this is done in Code Composer. There's a utility, graphical utility here where we can configure all the um, peripherals. And uh, just as an example, we can select the ADC port here. We can select on which pin it should be connected. And in this example, it's connected to PA24. We have the UART. The UART, we are only using uh, the TX pin because we have limited resources, uh, limited uh, GPUs. So we just configure it here to be TX only, but it's of course possible to have both TX and RX. And uh, this is connected to PA27. And then we have the PVM port, and the PVM port is located at PA0. And this tool will generate a configuration file. And uh, this is, of course, very nice to have because it takes normally quite a long time to fiddle around with all the registers. But when you s change things here in the graphical user interface, it will generate the, the code for you. And then I just made a small C program. It's just running in a continuous loop. We will sample the analog values. We will send the values to the UART and we will set the output to the PVM port. And here we have the lookup table and we can see for a wide range of inputs of the analog port, we will set the PVM value to 60. So we can just verify that uh, just shortly. And um, we can also have a look here on, you know, how much memory will this actually take up. So we can have a look here on memory allocation. So we can see that this small program uses uh, three kilobytes of flash and uh, 200, approximately 200 bytes of uh, SRAM. So there's uh, a lot of uh, headroom to make uh, more advanced programs, of course. But let's have a look on the output values here. So here we have the output from the serial port. Uh, we have here at the output in TRTAM, and we can see that it measures the analog value of 143 and the PVM is 142. And uh, if we go down a bit on the AD converter, then we can see that we have like a dead band here around 60. You can see for different values, 65, and then we can change it a bit here, 70, it's still 60. So it, it matches the values that we have in the lookup table. And of course you can change that as, as you want. And here on the oscilloscope, we can also see the PVM output according to the analog input values. 
So I hope that you got a bit inspired of what we can do with this very small processor. And uh, yeah, hopefully I will see you in the next one. Thank you for now. Bye.